Mario! It's a me, Mario! Woohoo! Let's go! Okie dokie! I've been the voice of Mario for 26 years. Now moving on to Luigi. Now moving on to Luigi. Oh, okay. <laughs> Hi, I'm Charles Martinet. I do the voice of Super Mario. Here we go! Woohoo! And Luigi 2, Luigi number one. Ha ha! And Wario, hey, about a rotten day. Yeah, oh, you gonna eat that garlic? <laughs> and I was even Donkey Kong at one point. <laughs> I am an actor and voice actor. I did, uh, gosh, 25 years of theater. And Run along to your party! Corporate videos. A circuitry and semiconductor processes. A few film and television products. Now beat it, all of you. Now! And then I had the marvelous beginning of becoming a voice actor, and that's how I started with uh, it's -a me, Mario. Mario was first created in 1981 in a game called Donkey Kong. As uh, it got refined through the years, uh, it became Mario and, and Princess Peach. Ah, the princess. And uh, I came along in 1990. I actually crashed an audition because I was catching them as if I walked in, they were walking out, finished for the day. I said, can I read for this? And the guy looked at his watch and he goes, ah, all right, come on in. You're an Italian plumber from Brooklyn, a character in a video game for Nintendo called Mario. So make up a voice, make up a video game, start talking. And I thought to myself, video game? I don't know anything about video games. And all of a sudden I hear action. I go, hello, I'm a Mario. Let's make a pizza pie together. You go get some sausage. I'm gonna get some spaghetti. We put spaghetti in the sausage and the pizza. And he said, you know, cut, stop talking. There's no more tape. All right, thanks, we'll be in touch. And I thought that was, you know, okay, there's the door. We'll see you later. And I, he calls Nintendo, I found a Mario. I got him. And that was 26 amazing, fantastic years ago. Hello, hello. <laughs> Whoopee! Oh, look at this world. The character for me brings out the best in me, and so I, I, I love that. Bring, bring, bring. <laughs> I love sharing things too. I go to meet uh, Mario fans, and I, I hear the most wonderful thing. You know, the, you're the voice of my childhood. Or I, you know, I used to play with my dad. Now I'm playing with my kids. You know, and we just—it's a way our family comes together. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ah, ah, pretty good. Ah, this brings back the memories. Mamma mia. You just have fun, you know? That's my mantra for life. Come on, let's go. Let's have more fun. Bye bye. See you in my games. Woohoo! All right, Tara, in this one, um, Rocky's at a mountaintop. He gets swatted by the monster tail. He falls, tumbles and rolls, and falls off another ledge, falls another bunch of, bunch of feet, and then crashes. All right, um, uh, watch my hands. I'll watch you. Here comes the... Perfect. <laughs> my name is Tara Strong, and I'm mostly known for my animation career. I'm the voice of Timmy Turner from The Fairly Odd Parents. I wish Cosmo and Wanda were here. <laughs> I was Baby Deal, and that's my camera. Powerpuff Girls. I'm just as tough as Blossom and Buttercup. I'm hardcore. Uh, Raven from Teen Titans, Azeroth, Metrion, Zinthos. Originally, I was Batgirl alongside Mark Hamill and Kevin Conroy. I've had a really fun career. Man, that was one tough montage. So I knew Timmy had to be happy, mischievous, silly, kind of nerdy. Oh, and very, very adventurous. Sorry, I was just trying to help. Bubbles had this weird way of pronouncing things like, Oh, I don't have a picky. Like, I don't know why. It goes L-E like that, but... <laughs> Poopy! The time I booked Rugrats, I just got off a plane with a screaming baby, and I'm like, that's the cry that I'm doing. And most of Dill's lines were in the stage directions, so I'd be like, okay. <laughs> and that was like my lines. <laughs> I remember at the session, we had to stop tape, and I'm thinking something's wrong, and they said, Tara, there's a new mom in the studio, and you're making her lactate. 
And you guys say I'm not funny. But seriously, this will be extremely painful. In the case of Raven, while I was doing the audition, it was similar to my own voice, and I thought, just this idea to have this weird guttural roll every time she says anything. And as soon as I started doing this, I saw all the people in the booth kind of look at each other and went, that's Raven. Robin, stop! Batgirl was me. Like, it's the only voice I do that's my own voice. It would be possible if you could do that last bit as Batgirl. And that was Batgirl. <laughs> 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 Winkle, it's like that classic story, the lion and the mouse that we're ripping off. When you're voice acting, you have to tap into the ability to make something believable without it being there. It's a completely different art form than on camera. You have to let the audience feel what it's like to fall off a cliff without there actually being a cliff there. Like, you gotta have to be willing to play around and not afraid to look silly. And then once you create a character, in my experience, they like live up in my brain and they're just ready to come down when it's their turn, so I don't confuse them. They all are their own entity. Basically, I'm a crazy person. So I just need a long scream as you just keep going. Yeah! Hey. Uh, what do you need? What do you need at the store? Garbage bags. Ooh, yeah, yeah. Fried chicken sounds great tonight. In a world where cat videos and memes rule the feeds, one media company will rise above the noise. This is Great Big Story. Okay, Red, that was great. Thank you. You got it? Yeah, that was great. Cool. You, you can stop speaking like that now, though. What do you mean? This is how I always speak. Okay, cut. My name is Red Pepper. I'm a voiceover artist. In the UK, I've voiced hundreds of movie trailers. Men in Black, Saving the Earth from the Scum of the Universe, Blair Witch Project, Armageddon, Space Jam, Mr. Bean's Holiday. So many, I forget half of them, to be honest with you. I started doing television adverts, animations, and audio books. I do a lot of video games as well, and a lot of them are sound effects of ghouls in the background. <laughs> Mr. Bean. When I first started doing movie trailers, that was, um, that was fun. One man, coming soon to a cinema near you. Sometimes I do romantic movies in a sleepy town. Sometimes I'm doing horror. Don't answer the door. You gotta use your voice. You gotta raise it sometimes, and you gotta take it to the depths. Very occasionally I get recognized, but generally no. But the time I do get recognized, phone goes off in the train, guaranteed. Hello? And people look up from behind the newspapers. The way I got into being a voice artist was kind of strange. I used to drive trains on the London Underground. One morning I was making my announcements. All stations to Harrow. Mind the doors. A television executive was a passenger on my train. He got off at the next stop, ran up to my cab. We exchanged details, and uh, the rest is history. I've had some strange experiences as a voice artist. I was doing a trailer for Jurassic Park, The Lost World, Steven Spielberg movie, and kindly they chose me to do the voice in the UK. Something is coming. Something big. And as I said that, a voice in my headphones said, wow, that's a great voice. And I didn't recognize it was Steven Spielberg. He was listening in from the States into London. Well, I, I swore, I said, who the f is that? Everybody went crazy in the studio. Shh, no, it's Spielberg, oh, I'm sorry. I appreciate what I do. I'm still meticulous about what I do. I'm still proud of what I do. I really don't look at it as a job. I'm having fun. It really is a cool job. It's got to be up there with one of the coolest jobs on the planet. Right, you got it? Cool. I'm out of here.
As far as my resume, you, you don't know me, but you know Tigger and Winnie the Pooh. I think it goes something like this, but I can only do it for a small smackerel of honey. And Tigger, don't be ridiculous. Tiggers are wonderful things. Their tops are made of the rubber. Their bottoms are made of the springs. You gotta pay for the rest. I'm kidding with you. <laughs> Well, you know, the way I got into the industry, I mean, I guess I was kind of uh, doing research my whole life because I'd be sitting in the back of the classroom and, you know, I thought it was time to break out a dolphin. I don't, I don't want to say I was the class clown, I was the class wit, because it sounds better. Some of the characters I play as a voice actor, I take my orders directly from Jafar, princess. And all I want you to do is trust in me. The women like a man with a big back porch, some kind of yeah. Woohoo! Come here, you little write off. People say, well, which one's most like you? And I, probably Darkwing Duck, because he's a wise guy. Well, I am the terror that flaps in the night. I am the bug that splatters across the windshield of crime. I am Darkwing Duck. What could be more important than a little something to eat? Well, you know, as far as uh, performing Pooh, we have to be true to the character. Well, I always say that Pooh sees the world through honey-colored glasses. Not a bad way to go. Somebody or something has found my honey. I, I jokingly say that I'm Winnie the Pooh and the Anti-Pooh because I'm the Tasmanian devil to <laughs> Taz like. A lot of times my agent will get in touch with me and there'll be a special needs uh, little boy, little girl. We're on the telephone and they're talking to Pooh or Tigger. Oh, hello there, Billy. How are you? Oh, very lovely. You're a Tigger voice. Oh, and of course, Tigger's a wonderful thing. The tops are made of the rubber, the bottoms are made of the springs. The but his response was, it's just so cute. He's, he's in the world. You know, Tigger was alive and talking to him to know that you can bring him into Smileville and, and where everything's happy and you're, you know, it's, it's just a blessing and a half. I, I, I never take it for granted. Honestly, the most rewarding part is seeing people's reactions and hearing stories about how this one song got them through uh, tough times and they, they'll go back and they'll listen to Wherever You Are, a song that Winnie the Pooh song. Cause without you I'm totally lost. I'm grateful, grateful every day. 